It's Colin from the Bike Dads here. On behalf of Jensen, I'm going to take you mountain bikers through what it takes to build up a complete frame. Perhaps you're new to mountain biking or you've had a bike in the past that you bought complete and now you're thinking I want something a little more customized. Well, I'll run through the pros of doing that and lay out the blueprint on how to do it. While it's not always easy, and it's definitely not always cheaper, there's something about having a customized bike where the dropper post is the right length, the cranks are the right length, the handlebars are the right sweep and rise, the saddle is so comfortable. Riding a bike like that, it is very rewarding. And the fact that you took the time to build that, that's also rewarding. My V1 Evil offering is going on four years now, and I took the time to build that bike out completely. Now, it's exactly the way I want it to be. When I ride it, everything's perfect. There's no complaints on my end. I even have a hard time thinking that I need a new bike anytime soon. I'm even working on a project right now for my eldest son. It's this. So this is an evil reckoning frame. It's a dead stock LB. I'm making it into a 27 and a half inch bike park destroyer. It has the reach I want. I'm gonna make it exactly how I want it for my little guy. So yes, usually it's cheaper to buy a complete bike. But like we mentioned, you get things you might not want. Yes, the manufacturers get the parts for cheaper and therefore you get that passed on to you in a complete bike. But those two frames I just mentioned, the Evo Offering and the Reckoning, those are on sale right now at Jensen and can be had for great deals. And that's the start to a bike that's gonna cost almost the same as a complete bike. Now there's other ways to keep the cost down as well. You can look to use parts, perhaps take parts from your existing bike, move them over to the new frame, lots of ways. Now, do you need mechanical know-how to build up a frame? No, no you don't. You need some elbow grease, a little bit of patience, and you know what? Today in the information world, YouTube will let you build a bike in no time. A few things you will need is one, a bike stand. The foundation bike stand, great deal. It'll last you your lifetime. You really need a bike stand. Two, you're gonna need a good set of tools, like the foundation standard toolkit. In here, you'll find everything you need to build a bike. Now there are six key steps involved when building up a frame, and we'll go through each one. One is bottom bracket installation. So your bottom bracket is right here, and there's a couple standards, and we'll talk about standards a little later, but it's very easy to do, and if you aren't up for the task, you can always take it to a bike shop for bottom bracket installation. Two is headset installation. Now, if you're lucky like me with these evil frames, I already have the cups pressed in from factory. So all I have to do is assemble the headset and I'm good to go. You may need to purchase a headset press for this job. And if you're doing a lot of these jobs and think you're gonna be building frames in the future, it will be worth it. However, you can also take this to the bike shop and it's a quick, easy install for them. So three would be the routing of the shifter cables and the brake cables. On this bike I have here, it's very easy as I have external brake routing. It's a little trickier, you know, when you're talking about routing brakes through the frame and things like that. It can be done, a little YouTube search and you'll be on your way. And if you really get stuck, it's the bike shop again. Four is gonna be mounting and adjusting drivetrain components. Now this is something you should learn anyways. So this is definitely worth a try. Five would be mounting and adjusting your brakes. And this is again, something you really should learn if you're an avid mountain biker, as you will need to be doing some fixes on the trail or home in the garage eventually. And six is mounting tires. That's an easy job. That definitely you should know. And it's something that can be done in a few minutes. So now we know those six key steps involved in building a frame. We now have to know the standards of our frame before we build it up. So let's go through each in detail. So the first standard you're gonna to have to be aware about, and this is particularly when choosing your wheels, is your rear dropout width. So this is the axle width of your rear. Now, traditionally, they were 135 millimeter wide in mountain bikes, and then we went to 142, and now we're at 148. So this bike here, this Evil Reckoning, it's 148 with a 12 millimeter through axle. There is a new standard that's starting to come. It's 157 by 12. It's called Super Boost. Um, hopefully that's the last of it. But right now, you're probably gonna be dealing with a 12 by 148. Next would be your brake mount standard. So traditionally we've had IS standard as well as post mount. 
Most modern mountain bikes now are post mount, uh, same as the fork. So you can see on the reckoning here, it's a post mount. It's native 100 and I believe 80 millimeter rotors. So if I wanted to put a bigger rotor on, I'd have to get a spacer here. They're readily available. You're also gonna have to know your seat post diameter to fit in the frame. So this seat tube, it fits a 30.9 diameter seat post. So when you're purchasing your dropper post, you wanna make sure you have that dial. Other standards are 34.9. We see that wider standard in newer bikes. We also see 31.6, and we see 27.2 sometimes in XC mountain bikes. Now bottom brackets. So there's two standards in bottom brackets right now. There's the press fit as well as the threaded bottom bracket. I have here a threaded bottom bracket. It is very easy to work with. The bearings are external. You simply thread them in with a wrench that's included in that kit I mentioned, and you're good to go. The press fit style bottom bracket, there are a few standards within that category. There's BB90, there's BB30, press fit 30, et cetera. So you wanna make sure you have the right bottom bracket when it comes to press fit because you're pressing those bearings inside the frame. Other things to take note is the width of the bottom bracket shell when you purchase the bottom bracket. Most mountain bike frames now are 68 to 73 millimeter shells. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for the bottom bracket. Another standard you're gonna to wanna to be sure of when you purchase your fork is the actual steer tube diameter. So the headset here, this is actually an inch and a half and it will taper down at the top to an inch and an eighth. So this is the standard you see primarily these days in mountain bikes and most forks will be equipped with a tapered steer tube. There are some forks still kicking around with a one and one eighth steer straight all the way through, but that's more the older forks. And while we're on the subject of the fork, you're gonna have to know the front hub spacing. Typically what we're seeing right now is boost. So that's 110 by 15. You might find the old 100 by 15 spacing. Just be sure you get the right one. So match that wheel set to the front and rear hub spacing. Choose the way you wanna mount your discs, either center lock or six bolt. I prefer six bolt, it's just more readily available and widespread. And on that rear hub, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the right driver. So what the driver is, is here. You can see that is what you mount your cassette to. So in the case of SRAM, the higher end cassettes, the 12 speed cassettes, you're gonna need something called the XD driver for their lower end drivetrains like NX and SX, it'll work on an HG driver. And if you're gonna go Shimano and their 12 speed setups, you're gonna want something called a micro spline driver. And when rounding out the drivetrain, it's best just to keep the same brand, be it SRAM or Shimano, and consistent throughout all those products in the drivetrain, it just makes it a heck of a lot easier to set up. Finding out these standards is super easy. I just had to go onto Jensen's website and look under the technical specifications for the frame I purchased, and voila, there it all was. The manufacturers also list the specifications on their site, and they typically archive their older models as well. There's even some geometry websites out there that archives all of the bikes. Building up a bike frame is really rewarding. Every time you ride it, you feel great about yourself. The bike feels great. You have a better understanding of how the bike works and how to fix it if any problems arise down the road. So make a plan, take your time, build your bike.